Welcome to the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast. I'm Mike Waters. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by Syracuse Athletic Director John Wildhack. We talked about Jim Beheim's retirement, his decision to hire Adrian Autry, his concerns regarding student-athlete welfare, and the situation surrounding Syracuse football player LaQuint Allen. Well, welcome back to another edition of the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast, and today, We've got a guest who I think you're all going to want to hear from. Uh, it's Syracuse University Athletic Director John Wildhack. And uh, John, first of all, thank you for joining us on the podcast. Mike, my pleasure. It's good to be with you. Yeah, this will be great. Uh, an opportunity to discuss a, a whole a variety of topics. Um, and I actually even uh, unofficially polled a few fans, meaning some friends of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to kind of see what they would what they wanted to hear about. So we'll get to a bunch of things here. Uh, but let's start with basketball since theoretically the title of this uh, podcast is the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast. All right. uh, Makes early, sense. Earlier this year, you did something that no Syracuse University athletic director has done in nearly 50 years. And that is you hired a new basketball coach. Um I was wondering How did you tell Adrian Autry that he had the job? How did you offer him the job or let him know that it was his? Yeah, it was, uh, we, we met Mike and I can't recall, you know, the specific date or whatever, that type of thing. But, um, you know, we met and it was, it was a relatively, you know, brief meeting. Um, but I, I told him, I said, you know, I said, coach is going to retire. And uh, I want you to lead our program. And uh, I told him, I did say, I, I said, you know, Adrian, you've earned this. And I said that at his press conference. He's earned this opportunity. And that's one of the things that's really impressed me about Adrian, his career, how hard he's worked to get to where he's, he's at. And, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was one of those really good meetings. It was one of the really good ones. What was his reaction? Um. I think you know, a, a wide, you know, emotional, um, grateful, thrilled, delighted. You, know, you can, you know, you can you can get out the thesaurus and in uh, in a in a number, but uh, a number of words. But um, you know, Adrian cares deeply about this place, about the university, about our community, and I think that makes it mean even more to him. And to obviously follow someone who mentored him, who coached him, who's been. You know, so good to Adrian in this time here at Syracuse. Um, I think Adrian understands, you know, how special a situation um, and opportunity this is. Was it just you and Adrian in the room at the time, or was there anybody else there? It was just Adrian and me. Wow. Was it an interview per se, or did you bring him in to just inform him? We we had we had talked over the past you know few years and and listen we had two great internal candidates Adrian's a great internal candidate Jerry's a great internal candidate Alan Griffin's a terrific assistant basketball coach too as you know we've got yeah you know, we've got a great staff but you know in, inevitably you knew that there was going to be change at some point and you need to prepare for that change and I spent more time with Adrian um and and jerry to some degree as well over the past couple of years and i wanted to because i wanted to get them i wanted to to get to know them better i wanted them to get to know me better um you know, i wanted to get a sense of of you know what they want to accomplish with their careers if they had the opportunity to lead this program their vision for the program um so those those happened over over a number of conversations that's interesting. You you know, I can I can imagine you know conversations taking place over a longer period of time. Uh, because of that, did you have to tell Jerry what your decision was, or maybe like over the course of all that time and those conversations, did he understand the direction you were probably going to go in when the time came? Yeah, I, um, I had to inform Jerry of my decision. Okay, what was his reaction? Yeah, I I think listen they. Jerry's one of the great attributes of Jerry McNamara is how competitive he is. And again, he loves this community. He loves this university. So there's, there's disappointment and that's, and that's natural, but that's why, 
you know, we immediately promoted him to associate head coach, um, which gives him additional responsibilities and, you know, clearly elevated him as, is, you know, is the number two to Adrian. And, and I, and I think Jerry, you know, what's beautiful about Jerry is, yeah, obviously he, you know, he wanted the job, but he's all in and he was immediately all in, in terms of getting this program to where we all want it to be. Why, why didn't you conduct a na- na- national search? And maybe you know, I already know the answer. Mike, over the past couple of years, I talked to a lot of people. And I said this at the press conference when we introduced Adrian. I talked to a lot of people around the country that I really, really respect. And, you know, that are current coaches, former coaches, in the game, very knowledgeable. And I really listened um, in, in what came back on a consistent basis is number one, this program still is, is in a good place. It's not like this program, you know, yeah. Last couple of years has been a little disappointing, but we played Miami three times in the past two years, right? right. We double digit leads in all three of those games. One year they go to lead eight, one year they go to final four. We're not that far away. Mm-hmm. We've got, we've got a gap and we've got to close that, but we're not that far away. And, people who I really respect said, Hey, you know what? You don't, you don't need to, you don't need to tear it down to start over. You know, there's things in place. And Oh, by the way, Adrian Autry is a really, really good basketball mind. He is a tremendous recruiter, tremendous recruiter and very highly respected. Um, So I think, you know, that, that had impact. And I, the other thing is you want, what's important to me. and, And this was the same way when I was at ESPN, I want people who really care, about this place. Yeah, I want, you know, Sir, I don't want it. Syracuse University is just another job. You know, this is this is my destination job. And I wanted that when I hired people to ESPN. I wanted to hire people to ESPN. They wanted to really work and be part of ESPN. Not just, hey, you know what? Okay, I get to work at ESPN in 18 months. I'll go to CBS or Fox or whatever. Um, and that's 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 important to me in in how I evaluate potential candidates for whether it be a head coach or whether it be any opening. You you mentioned that like, if you talked with people about Adrian and and they were telling you, he's going to be a good coach. Who, who, who did you talk to? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep those, I'm going to keep those conversations between those individuals and me, but um, it was, it was a broad cross section and, um, and they, they gave me very direct and candid uh, feedback that that um, that helped me. Were these basketball coaches or athletic directors or high school coaches? Um, some were coaches, some former coaches, some you know, some are in the you know, very closely tied to college basketball. They may not be former coaches or sitting head coaches, that type of thing. But mm-hmm. people whose knowledge I really, really respect, and and I know that they're going to shoot straight with me. Another conversation I was interested in was. Um, Jim Beheim in the, in the press conference where, where he spoke, but it was also Adrian's introductory press conference. He mentioned that he came to you the day before the final home game against Wake Forest and said that he was ready. Maybe that's not exactly what he said, but he, he let you know. What was that conversation like and where did it take place? It was, it was, it was in my office. Um, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was it was in some ways kind of a, a bittersweet conversation, right? Because I mean, Coach Bayheim has meant so much to this university. He's meant so much to this community. My freshman year was his first year as head coach. Pretty crazy, right? Um, but it was you know it was a really it was a really good conversation, and it was you know it was what I really respect so much about Coach Bayheim is. Every coach will say, hey, I really care about the program going forward. Every coach will say that. Jim Beheim really does care deeply about this program, about this university. I'm thrilled. He's still part of the university. He's still part of the athletics department. Um, he's going to help us in a number of ways. He's going to help us raise money, which we need to do. He was the other day, I was walked by his office and, uh, and our volleyball coach, Coach Bake, was in there talking to him for about 20 minutes which is great. And and Jim has said, I will talk to any coach. I'm available, head coach, assistant coach, you have a recruit, that type of thing. So to have someone of, of, 
the treasure of knowledge and information be so willing to share it so broadly. Um, we're pretty lucky to have him. So if I see Syracuse volleyball go into a zone next year, I, I know why. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Jim, have co- he had a year left on his contract. Could he have coached next season if he wanted to? Yeah, it's it, the conversation we had is is you know Jim was ready. You know Jim was ready to step down and and retire, and you know that's the conversation. So that you you deal with the you deal with the moment and you deal with you know the reality of the moment um he obviously probably wanted one of his assistants to follow him right did he did was that part of the conversation i mean that was and we've talked you know we've talked over time and and jim knew and i said hey you know you any ad's got it you gotta have the succession plan right any leader in business when i was at espn Disney used to put us through this exhaustive three-day succession planning yeah. program, which was incredibly valuable. And we all balked at it the first time we went, oh, this is going to be, it was really, really good. And it made, it really made people think. And so clearly, was it his preference, Coach Bam's preference? Yes, but it wasn't, you know, he, he didn't try to influence who I hired. He didn't say hire this person or that person, or he didn't say, gee, you know, you know, if you hire somebody from the outs, no, he he never, he 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 never he never tried to influence my decision. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit. New topic. Uh, you're currently the chair of the ADs group for the ACC, and I I know that group has to work with a lot of issues and everything, but I know there's concerns about the student athletes and student athlete welfare. Um, in that regard, what's your biggest concern when it comes to student athletes and their emotional, financial, familial uh, welfare? Yeah, we've got, you know, it's a microcosm of, of society, right, of young people across our country. And it's, it's you know, it's not easy, right? They've, they're the first digital native generation, right? You know, they've grown up, you know, they're on, they've been on their phones since they were five or six years old. Um, they had to go through a pandemic, you know, many of them for a year and a half, you know, they weren't in school. So you, lose, you, you, you lose that socialization. So, you know, I think it's for, for, I think any university or any company that has a large number of young employees is you've really got to be cognizant and provide the support in all respects that you can, um, to, to ensure that in our case, our student athletes or our students, or if you're running a company or employees, you know, are in a really good, in a really good place. And they understand that you, that you support them and you have resources. You know, we've got, we've got mental health experts in athletics. We've got, we work very closely with the counseling center on campus. We do financial literacy training multiple times over the course of the year. Um, we have, you know, career development coordinators. Um, so we really, we really try to, and whenever I meet with recruit parents or recruits and they say, well, what, you know, what, what do you really do? I said, what we do is, is, is we prepare your son or daughter that when they leave Syracuse, wherever, wherever endeavor they choose, they're prepared to have success. We're in the business of developing young people. We develop young people who just have happen to be great athletes. It's no different than I think any other any other university you know, than the university. We're in the business of developing young people, and they come in as freshmen, and when they leave as seniors, you know what? They're 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 different people. You know the Northwestern football and and baseball too situations had me wondering how can an act of hazing, and in some cases these these the the, the racial abuse go unnoticed or unchallenged for so long? Mike, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the only the only thing I know about Northwestern is what you've read and what I've read. And, right. You know, it's, I mean, Pat Fitzgerald was, you know, one of the more respected coaches, right, in all college football, right? Yeah. And, you know, it was, what came out was, you know, was, was, was stunning. But this is 2023, you know, hazing of any kind, it's just, it's not acceptable. And, you know, we've said that to our coaches. Um, it does a, does another round of emails go out to 
your staff and all the coaches from your office and me like in case I wasn't clear. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it was, you know, we had a head coaches meeting yesterday, which was scheduled and it wasn't because of Northwest. It was because of a bunch of other topics, but I used that as an opportunity. It's just, Hey, you know what, you know, you can't, it, that that won't work into it does it's not acceptable in 2023 mm -hmm. and um you know listen coaches you know there's so much pressure on coaches you know they're competitive you know they want to win you know and i think you you can i think coaches can be demanding to an extent but you can't be demeaning just like me is if if, if i'm demeaning to one of my staff um i'm not going to be here very long Right. Or you're going to lose good staffers because they won't be here long. Absolutely. Right. Right. OK. Uh, this gives a, a, a chance to, to kind of segue into another story here in Syracuse. Uh, involves the Syracuse football team and the recent settlement of the lawsuit with running back LaQuint Allen, who can now rejoin the team in, in mid-August. Um, what were your thoughts? Let me, let me before I even ask a specific question. What were your thoughts on the whole situation involving LeQuint? You know, I think yeah, to 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 me, I'm I'm pleased that there's resolution. We're and it's all about moving ahead and moving forward. Um, you know, university issued a release. Uh, you know, I think it was on went Tuesday or whenever the day the settlement was, and um, it's all about moving. It's all about moving forward. Um, you know, Quinn's been, he's a good student, um, been on the athletic director's honor roll. Um, he's, you know, he, he's obviously you know, he's not a talented player. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm pleased for, for everyone that there's a resolution and we're moving forward. Did you object in any way to the punishment that was originally handed down for the Quint, or, or did you advocate on his behalf? That's that's not a role an athletic director should play in. Okay. You know, it's it's you know, there's you know, there's there's separation, and there's separation for good reason in terms of you know disciplinary, um, anything in terms of you know un, your, your university conduct behavior that type of thing and. That's I don't I don't get engaged in that and I shouldn't get engaged in that. Hey, I can see that. Um, you know, talking about student athlete welfare, though, LaQuint's from Camden, New Jersey. Right. Now, I read that he sends a portion of his grant and aid money back home to family. You know, so he's, a, he's a scholarship athlete actually supporting the family. His, his father is killed in February. He's shot to death. And then he's getting kicked out of school for two semesters missing a football season was the original punishment. And I just, I just don't know how that actually helps a student athlete's welfare. Well, I think, you know, part, part of what it goes back to what I said earlier, right? We're in the business of developing young people, right? Yes. And in some ways, when we get that first generation college student, from a family to come to Syracuse to have academic and athletic success to see that young man or young woman graduate and then go on to start their career. Those are the best stories. Those okay. are the best stories because you know what, you know, we, we can, I don't want to overstate it, but in some way we can help change lives with things like that. And it's, but you LaQuin's know, life, LaQuinn's life was almost changed in a negative way. Right. Right. But it, again, there's resolution, you know, onward. Um, and that's to me, that's the most important thing. But it's I go back to what I said is when when you have kids that are first generation college students and when they get that degree, what that degree means to them, what it means to their family, what it means to their siblings. Right. Their cousins, et cetera, that type of thing. You know, that's 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 really, really impactful. And I've had a, I've had some athletes over the years since I've been here who've been in that situation and, and they've either sent an email or a note or have come back um, and just, you know, thanked not only me, but thanked, you know, the athletic staff for, Hey, you know what? You helped change, you know, you helped change my life. Quit played in the bowl game. He participated in spring ball. Mm -hmm. What, what if any punishment or discipline came from athletics? Well, again, our, our, our role is to let the, the process play out let the university process play out. And that's exactly what we did. 
and that's okay. we that's what that's what we do with any athlete. But you know, other athletes have been suspended from a game or bowl game, spring ball. So I mean, athletics can dole out punishment, right? Correct. Does that an indication that maybe football and athletics didn't think he was deserving of punishment? And there's there a no, disconnect not, between the. Again, I'm yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not going to opine on that. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go back to what I said is you know, I'm we're pleased there's resolution um, and we move onward. All of us move onward. Last question on this issue before I move onward. I promise. <laughs> Had this ruling been upheld, were donors threatening to pull their support if LaQuint couldn't play? I mean, would, would there have been damage in terms of fan or donor support? Yeah, I, yeah, I received some some notes from fans and, and things like that. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know, right? You don't, you know, you don't know uh, yeah. for sure. But there's. You know, there there wasn't anybody that I received a note from that, you know, hey, I'm going to pull this or I'm not going to do it. You know, there, there were people who expressed their opinion. You know what? And they utilized their First Amendment rights and good for them. Um, but, you know, there there is no no one who's, you know, you, if, if this doesn't get changed, then I'm pulling all my support or this or donor. No. Let's let's switch gears. Um, NIL. Yay. Um, are your, there's been some rulings here within New York state, some NIL, NIL laws are changing. And I was wondering, are, are your collectives going to be moved in house or more closely tied to the athletic department with the passage of, of the recent New York state law? I don't, I, we're not, we're not going to move them in house. Um, you know, I think what, what the New York legislation does it, you know, it allows us to be a little bit more involved, which I think is good. I think that makes sense. I think that's good for the athletes. I think that's, you know, it's like anything else. I mean, our multimedia rights, we out, we we outsource those to Learfield. We talked to Jason Thomas, who's the general manager, every single day. Um, so, you know, sidearm, right? They produce our website. We talked to Jeff Rubin and his team every single day. We outsourced our ticket sales to Legends. They're, they're, they're here. You know, we talk to them every single day. So I think there's a lot of similarities. So I think it allows us to 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 have a little bit more involvement, which again I think is good for the athlete. And I think it's it's good for for our pro, for our program overall. Would you like to see the uh collectives merge in into one? Good, good question. Um at some point this this is still so fluid, Mike. You know, and I, th I think it may remain fluid for a period of time. You've got, you know, Charlie Baker, and say a president um, who's really, really impressive, and he's come in and he's done, you know, an excellent job. And his goal is obviously can he wants federal legislation, and he wants transparency in terms of NIL deals, which I think would be good. We need we need transparency because the only thing we know right now is is you know there's there's a lot of fiction, um, you know in in the NIO world, and it'd be really good to know, right? You know what 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 is you know what what's what's really happening here. Um, so I don't you know one collective, two collectives. I don't know. It's still it's so fluid still, and I think you know if. If federal legislation um, doesn't happen, and I think, you know, the window here is probably, you know, and Charlie Baker said it, right? You know, sometime it's got to be done sometime this fall or it's not because Washington is going to focus on the presidential election and obviously Congress. You know, the House is everyone in the House is up for election in 24. So I think we'll, you know, we need to see how that plays out. Um, I, I. My thinking in this is it's going to continue to be very fluid. Um, we've got to kind of do our planning that it's going to be fluid and, and do the best we can for Syracuse and do the best we can for all of our athletes, all of our student athletes. You know, Syracuse used to regularly host NCAA tournament basketball games. Um, it's been quite a while. I know part of it's uh, there's been renovation going on with the dome for the for the past few years. Are will, will you bid on hosting NCAA tournament uh, rounds in the future? 
I think, yeah, we're interested in that. Um, it's because we hosted, you know, we've hosted the East Regional Finals, right, as you know, several times. Now, I think if you look at where the East Regional Finals have been located over the past several years, they've moved to more major markets, yep. right? They've been at the Garden, et cetera, that type of thing. So, you know, a, a more impactful play for us might be to host the first and second rounds. It may be more impactful for the local economy. So we get fan bases from eight schools as opposed to four schools, right? Right. Um, but yeah, I think there's, I think there'd be interest, and I think um, you know, given the improvements that we made to the JMA Dome, given the additional improvements that we'll make to the JMA Dome, given the, uh, you know, the affinity for basketball this community has, I, I would think we'd be a desirable site. Speaking of the JMA Dome and the renovations, I, I want. I think you said this in your press conference a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the new seating, fall of twenty four. Fall fall twenty four is the goal. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, one last question for you here. You're in your eighth year, I think, as athletic director. You're on your second contract. I don't want to say how old you are because we don't <laughs> do that with coaches and ads in this town. Um, how much longer do you plan on staying in the job? Well, I, you know, number one, I, you know, I serve at the pleasure of the chancellor and the board. And I, I know that, um, and I appreciative to the chancellor for his support. And he's been very, very supportive of athletics in my tenure here. Very, very supportive. You know, you mentioned what we're doing at the dome, what we're going to do at the dome. You know, that doesn't get done without the support of the chancellor. Um, and then I say, I think secondly is, is as long as I have the passion, um, which I have, and I have the energy, and you know my health is 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 excellent. You know, thankfully, um, yeah, I want to continue to do this. Um, I love the university. I went here. Most of my family went here. Um, we love the community as well. So I want to continue to you know hopefully make a positive impact not only on Syracuse athletics but also for our community as well. And as long as I. I have the passion, I'll do it at the same time. Um, it, the, the day that I wake up and I don't have the passion, I'll stop. I'll, I'll never, I'll never fake it. I you wouldn't sound do like that. A I wouldn't do that. Basketball coach I covered for a long period of time. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to the university. I wouldn't do that to, to the community. You know, the day I don't have the passion, the energy, um, I'll stop. Okay. Well, Looking back on these last eight years, you mentioned the dome renovations. What other things are you proud of, most proud of so far? You know, I think, I mean, obviously the dome renovations are huge. What I'm most proud of is just the success that our student athletes have had, you know, academically and athletically. Um, and I think we're performing at, at the highest historical levels ever academically, our student athletes. And you know, they're in a wide range of programs and very, very challenging programs. And again, you know, we're here to educate young people. And I understand, you know, it's it's fans, you know, it's wins and losses. I understand that. But we're in the business of educating people. So I think the academic performance, our graduation success rate, historic highs, we're in the top five of the power 65. You know, we've had competitive success, you know, across the board in, in our sports. We want to continue to we want to continue to to have that in all our sports. Um, I think what we've done with the Lally Complex um, is is tremendously important, and to you know open open the new entryway, which is now the temporary home for football for the next eighteen to twenty four months. Um, in February, made a statement, and you know if you come down Col you know you come down uh, Colvin Street now, and you see what's being done with the soon to be old football operations center that makes a statement uh to me that Syracuse you know athletics and, and the new football operations center that's not the only component of, of the second phase it will be one team Olympic sports center one team Olympic sports center lounge a new full service cafeteria for all sports is that's going to help us provide the best experience possible for our student athletes um, we're keenly interested in sports medicine um, in every way, shape, and form that you can define that, um, and technologies that we can use or that we can implement to give us that competitive edge, injury prevention, how can you rehab as safely as possible, 
what technologies or your wearable technologies where a trainer can go to a coach and say, you know what, hey, go easy on Mike today, right? His, his hammy's a little sore. You know what? Hey, Mike's good. You know, you, he can go. Um, the works, you know, so there's a lot that, that uh, again, I'm most proud of our young men and our young women um, who represent this university and our community, I think extraordinarily well. But there's a lot to be done, too. And it's it's I, I always and I've always been this way. I always think about what what what's to be done, not what we have done, what's to be done. Well, John, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. This has been really terrific. Uh, I, I do appreciate it. And uh, I, there's a lot more I could ask you about. But we're just going to have to save that for your next time on the pod. No, I, I appreciate it, Mike. Good to be with you. And, you know, I appreciate our fans. Um, you know, our fans are they're great. They're passionate. Um, they're supportive. And, you know, I ask that they come out and support uh, support our football team this fall, support both our basketball teams, our Olympic sports as well. But um, thanks for your time. It's good to be with you. Thank you, John. Syracuse Athletic Director John Wildak. Um, We'll see you all next time on the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast.